ESPN Sports. All right, so we're going to get into some NFL playoffs. You know, I'm the champ. That's Scarlett. That's a genius. You know the rundown. What's happening? Wild card, super, super wild card weekend this week. Seattle versus the Niners. First game up on the schedule, man. Tell me what you think of the matchup. Well, I think it's going to be a solid matchup. It's a divisional opponent. We know it's hard to be a team three times. Do you see what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Seahawks come in. They solid. 49ers coming in hot, red hot. Yeah. You know, now they got a rookie quarterback up in that thing. You know what I'm saying? That defense is strong. I like me, McCaffrey. The boy is sick. So, you know, but I think it will be one of those close battles. You know, I, I like it to be close. You know, it's, it's going to be a tough game either way. Like you said, it is hard to win three straight against anybody, you know, uh, and, and you're getting to see them in a the playoff where everything is on the line. There's so much to play for. Uh, Geno Smith reborn. His career is reborn and he gets a chance to make a statement for his team. Uh, 30 touchdowns and 11 interceptions on the season at this point. Uh, but at the same time, you got uh, Mr. Irrelevant leading the Niners to the playoffs with that great de- defense with the Bosa boy, you know, and, and that cast of characters, uh, McCaffrey, Samuel, uh, and Kittle out there, you know, and, and he's been making making his money dealing with that with that offense. So uh, it's anybody's game, but, you know, the Niners a little tougher. I don't know what you got to say, champ. Uh, uh, you know what? Um, the Niners are not very good against the pass. Um, the Seahawks are not very good against the run. Okay. This should be a very interesting matchup at the end of the day. I like Seattle to go and it's going to be very, very difficult. I heard it's supposed to rain all day in Santa Clara. So I did the hear that footing too. out there is going to be one to remember. So, you know who I really favor? Uh, it's a rookie in this matchup that I really like. Kenneth Walker, mm. he's a grown man out he's there. He, yeah. Those type of guys seem to have their way. And I know we said we, the foregone great one, already Hall of Famer, Christian McCaffrey that everybody loved. But it's something to be said about this hard-nosed running rookie where you can turn the ball around and hand him the ball 25 times. So if it's rainy, if it's sloppy, if it's muddy, guess what? That makes teams even, mm. you know. That's well, I mean, about- that might favor the Niners then with that run defense. You, you know what? Everybody can be gashed, my brother, especially right. when the footing is bad. You know right. what I mean? Listen, I've seen worse, th- worse upsets than this, mm. but uh, I- I'm not gonna just say it's an upset, but you know, um, they're 12th in passing, Seattle, um, and and the Niners are 20th against the pass. So, like, they're bottom half of the league. Um, Gino going to have his complement of weapons. You said it, 30 and 11 on the season, 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He's going to have DK. He's going to have Lockett. He's going to have Goodwin. The rookie is a nice addition out the backfield. So is Dallas. So is Homer. So he has players. Um, no offense, not the worst tight end. So he can get – he can make some plays against right. that secondary and – um. I'm not just going to completely rule out Seattle in this game. Um, the Niners have beat them twice. It's hard to beat a team three times. Tough. It's real tough. So, uh, who you got? Man, I'm going to go ahead with the 49ers. Um, I just think that this that's a little bit just too much for them. Give me 24-17 49ers, faithful to the Bay. Mm, mm. You know what? And I hate to 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 piggyback on my <laughs> man, the genius. But, you know, I also got the Niners. I think that that offense is a little too much, even in those rainy conditions. I mean, they can get that thing going with McCaffrey out there, uh, short passing game or anything to Kittle. Uh, and, and, and just I think they're just going to run rough shot over him after a while. The, the, the talent on the depth chart is going to start to show. I got Niners 28-16. Man, I, I, I've been watching. Uh, every show I can think of this week, and I don't think anybody has picked Seattle to win this game. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to take Seattle oh. in this game, on the road, in an upset fashion, um, 22 to 20. Mm. Um, you know I'm writing that down. Let's see. I know. <laughs> uh, 22 to 20, Seattle. I-, I know it's a long shot. It's really hard to beat a team three times. 
Pete Carroll's a really good coach. Rookie quarterback at the helm. Um, I'm kind of shaky on this one right here. As much talent as they have in McCaffrey, and we didn't even really mention the probably the best player in football, who is Debo Samuels, and um, he went he went nameless. I said but, his name, I but um, name. yeah, man, I I, I really like. Uh, I'm going to take Seattle on an upset this week. All right. So uh, moving on from that Saturday night's game, um, probably the, the most you would say competitive on paper. The L.A. Chargers versus uh, Duval County, mm-hmm. Jacksonville Duval. Jaguars. So um, talk to me about this matchup. Man, this matchup here is very interesting, man. I like it because I think you're right, money. It is going to be one of those that is just – that might go down to the very end. You got Justin Herbert and some tout him as the next one, the great one. Sometimes I think it's a little too much right now. He ain't done shit just yet. Uh, but nevertheless, he is sweet. His game is nice. Um, they just lost their wide receiver because a stupid ass coach played him in a meaningless game. So, you know, you lose some of your weapons there. Jaguars, it's Duval, man. They tend to turn it up a little bit when they play at home. Well, I mean, uh, like all the things that Todd just said, I mean, I just I want to see a passing attack. Mm. Okay, we got Sunshine over there, Trevor Lawrence. You know, we got Justin Herbert, two of the, the two young gunslingers in the league. Um, I think it really hurts the Chargers losing Mike Williams. Mm-hmm. Like you said, a meaningless game. He goes out with a with an injury, uh, he and with a back injury at that. So um, he's he's out. He's not even doubtful or questionable for this game, which would be the biggest game of their season. They're ten and seven. Jacksonville is at nine and eight. And they went on a, a, a string of wins here to end their season. So the Jaguars do have the momentum. Um, they do have a, a decent running game to, to spell Trevor Lawrence when he when he's not throwing that pill around. So uh, it's very even to me. You know, I, I just want to see a good show, and I think they're going to put one on. Chargers, nine in total offense. Jacksonville, 10 in total offense. Chargers third in the pass, Jacksonville 10th in passing. Uh, Chargers 30th in rushing, Jacksonville is 12th in rushing. Mm. So, um, but ATN or Eckler, you know mm. what I mean? So, um, this Bose is back, so that should be interesting for uh, the Chargers. Um, good pass rush. So, basically, what is going to come to, I, I mean. The Chargers are a better team. They're more complete from top to bottom. Even losing Mike Williams, they still got guys like Joshua Palmer, and um, they still got Keenan Allen, and uh, they still got DeAndre Carter. Um, they still got uh, Everett. So they still got plenty of weapons, like a foregone Austin Eckler. So they got players. But, you know, ATN is a, a really good explosive player. Um, Zay Jones is coming to his own. Um, they got Ingram on that side of the ball. Um uh, both Joneses over there. So, I mean, they also have some weapons. Neither one of these quarterbacks have proven that they can win on a high level. Um, neither one of these quarterbacks, have, if anybody's shown that they could win the big game, it's probably Trevor Lawrence over mm-hmm. Justin Herbert. Every time I see Justin Herbert with the lights on, he shit the bed. It, it, it basically can go either way. I mean, the Georgians are 28 against the rush. You know what I mean? Jackson, the Jaguars are 28 against the pass. You know what I mean? This, this right here, I guess you lose a Mike Williams, but you still throw it around the yard. I mean, you're going to Duval County. So who you got? You know, for me, just to touch back on the Chargers real quick, I don't like their head coach, Brandon Staley. I mm. just don't think he makes critical, smart decisions. And time and time again, he's failed his team. And for that reason, I'm going Jacksonville Jaguars to get that win. Um, I like them. I like them in another close battle, man. I like 20 to 17 Jacksonville. Well, um, I feel a little different. You know, uh, I think it really hurts the Chargers that Mike Williams is out. Um, but I do think that bringing back uh, Bosa is going to help that defense. And this is the kind of game that can come down to uh, one or two scores or a couple possessions. Um, and I feel like he – is going to be that part on that defense that helps them overcome maybe one score or two. 
We talk about Austin Eckler. He's used to catching that ball out the backfield. He's a, he's he's damn near another receiver for now when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. And I mean, Mike Williams has been out so long, they were used to playing without him, even though he was an edge for them. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely leaning towards the Chargers, 34-28 uh, over the Jacksonville Jaguars and Duval County. You know, um, I don't really like teams that go from that time change from the West Coast to the East Coast, but this is not a one o'clock kickoff. Mm -hmm. This is a 830 kickoff. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that really comes into play right here. I'm going Chargers in this game to go into Duval, beat Jacksonville. I just think the Chargers are a better team. I, I just think they're a better team than um, the Jaguars. Bose is back. They're going to get after him, after Trevor Lawrence. I really worry about the Chargers run defense. If they can get some stops, um, I'm like them to win this game. 31-17. Uh, uh, Derwin James is a grown man back there. I think he's going to out quarterback Trevor Lawrence on the and defense. And Jacksonville is like one year away to me. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, you know, he, he's a he just a he's just a man back there. So he's going to quarterback that defense, um, roll some coverages, and I believe they're going to force some turnovers. Thirty-one seventeen Chargers. All right, we're going to move on from there and get to the next game. Sunday's opener: Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. In Buffalo, tell me about this game. Well, of course, I mean, you know what time it is. You see what time it is, right? You know, Buffalo Bills fan through and through. Um, it's a lot been going on these last few weeks, actually the whole year with Buffalo. All right, we're talking about the tragedy at the uh, the, the store. Cat going there shooting up black folk. You know what I'm saying? That was horrible to start the season. Um, multiple injuries, Hyde getting, going down. You know what I'm saying? Tredavious White not being available till towards them near the end of the season, Von Miller going down. And through it all, man, they've just been like steady as she go, you know, just handling business as Buffalo does. Shout out to Coach McDermott. Again, last week I said that he should be the coach of the year, in my personal opinion, right? Uh, for Miami Dolphins, man, you know, they've had some injuries at the quarterback position. They're down to third string. I know Teddy Bridgewater is listed as the backup, could potentially play. Um, I know, Dean, you can speak more to that, but – I just think that I, I don't like what I see the last few weeks, right? They start off hot with that eight and three record and kind of tapered off. Um, again, this is a division. Kind of, kind of, well, yeah, kind of tapered off, <laughs> kind of tapered off, <laughs> but this is a divisional opponent. And again, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? When two teams play each other three times, you know what I'm saying? You know what they doing. They know what you doing. So for me, it's going to be another good. I think it's going to be another good close game. I, I don't expect a blowout. I expect a good battle even with the third string quarterback. Well, I mean, I, I you know, on uh, CBN Sports, as you all know, we got two Bills and they got me, the Dolphins fan, all AFC East rivals, mm -hmm. but I got love for them. You know, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'll take a different take than uh, Genius here. Uh, once again, uh, much respect to Buffalo, DeMar Hamlin. Got much love for you and, and, and all the uh, Bills Mafia. You know, you showed the same love to uh, Tua you know, when he's dealing with his concussions and things like that. And even if that didn't happen, I, I respect and love uh, that young man and what's going on with him and, and, and Bill's Mafia. We, as Dolphins, are a strong football team when we have a quarterback. We're a dangerous football team when we have a quarterback. Uh, when Tua was healthy, um, I would any day of the week say that we can beat the Buffalo Bills. First game of the season, we played them twice. Um, we won that game. The second game, it came down to the wire. Two Warriors going against each other the way that I would want it to be. Um, I don't see this game the same way. Teddy Bridgewater, he's frail. I mean, I'm going to be 100 with you guys because, you know, this is what you're coming for. You know, I'm giving it to you. The, the, the man is a terrible backup. He's been injured every time we put him in. And we've had to see this third string, seventh round quarterback come out there who can't lead in NFL offense. Last week, I saw the worst game, one of the worst games I've ever watched, uh, just trying to get into the playoffs. So we squeak our way in on an, uh, a terrible, uh, awful victory against the Jets, and now we're going up against our should-be divisional rival, which we've been competing very well with. And right now, without a substantial quarterback to lead this offense, uh, we're – Severely handicapped versus the Bills. So I don't see it being a close football game at all. 
I, I got the, you know, I, I got the bills. I'm just going to say it right now. I got the bills in this game. You know, uh, Raheem Mostert, also injured. He might not play. Um, at this point, they're talking about game time decision. Before you guys see this video, that might have changed. But right now he's out. He hasn't practiced. Um, so we're looking at Skylar Thompson coming into this game with a guy off the street and Mike Glennon, who didn't even play in that Jets game. I ought to play him to see what the hell he has. Uh, so we're going up against the fully loaded Bills with the team that's better than Bruce without a quarterback. Um, defense can do its best, but, you know, you can't score points for him. So that's how yeah. I feel about this game. He said Mike Glennon, play him, see what he has. It's Mike Glennon. We know what he has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. better than that seventh round guy all right man so <clears throat> two games this year very very close um which is uh, which is funny because buffalo dominated both games um in yardage and time of possession so um that second game y'all barely won you had to win on a field goal and you wouldn't but like we still but we still that was our that was our best rushing game of the year. We still dominated on yards and time of possession, my friend. Y'all hit some big play. I didn't say I, I said it was close, but we dominated in yards and time of possession, which is a fact that you cannot argue. OK, moving on to the game this weekend. Um they uh, are rolling out, and, and he talked a lot about um, the third-string quarterback, but what I want to talk about with Buffalo right now is the fact that we are getting our all-pro quarterback on defense. Had we been missing Josh Allen for these 15 games like we've been missing Micah Hyde, our defense would not be as poor as it is. And on top of that, our defense isn't really even that poor. We're, we're ranked six in total defense, allowing 319 yards a game. You know what I'm saying? We are second in scoring defense, allowing 17.9 points a game. So, and now we get our all pro. He's the only all pro we have on defense. You know, we, we talk about Derwin James and all these other safeties. You know who's an all pro? First teamer, Micah Hyde. Mm -hmm. We haven't had him in 15 games. Or we haven't lost a game with Poyer in the lineup. We have the best safeties in the league, and we haven't really even get to see these guys play all season. I'm most excited about the Bills' defense. Mm -hmm. We lead the league in rushing since week 14. No one is understanding what is, what is really going on. We have flipped the whole dynamic of our squad since December. We are a power rushing team, throw the ball deep, hit, clip and now we get our safety back so i really like him to outwit uh skylar thompson this week um you know uh, outwit yeah, i got outwit that you, know <laughs> you could outwit him too uh i really don't have much to say on this game man i don't want to sound like a fucking homer you know what i mean i, I i'm just gonna come out and say it man bills 33 dolphins 14 Okay, I see you at uh, Bills 31, and I'm going to go ahead and give Dolphins 21 points. I'm, I, I think they find a way to get some points on special teams. Nah, not against ours, bro. I, I just I just see it. That's how I see it. I'm, 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 I giving, I'm, I'm being favorable with the 14. I don't even know if they're going to get – Scott or Thompson going to get past ah, half court, see. half midfield. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Man, so – I, I also have picked the Bills. Oh, man, they about to fire your ass. 34 as 17 Bills. 34. I mean, only a real football fan is going to be honest about what it is. I'm not going to pick my team knowing that we handicap. Why you know, not? If we, Why not? Because that's BS. No, it's not. It's BS, man. Stand on your hat, man. Stand on your no, jersey. No, no Stand thank on you. That number one. I, I got love for we, Hey, this on wax, man. Everybody, yeah, he tuck and tail. Tuck and tail. He ain't no it's real forever. Dolphins fan. He ain't no real Dolphins fan. Out of here, you know man. what I'm saying? That's who y'all. Who y'all third string? You don't even know. We don't got one. We don't carry three quarterbacks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my point is proven, my brother. Teddy, two <laughs> gloves. I'm out of here. All right. Next on the list, we got a uh, four o'clock game. Giants, Vikings, in the meta. Oh, uh, no, no. This is uh in the Metrodome, right? In, in or what the, is that new stadium over there? In the new uh, Metrodome. And Mercedes Dome? Mercedes Dome or some shit? Okay. Yeah. Who you got, man? I mean, what's, what's the matchup looking like? Well, for me, man, you know, I can't never 
trust Kirk Cousins. I, I can't. Oh. I can't. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> I can't until he showed me you something. Obviously, can't. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, they have a great team. You know, um, oh boy, wide receiver. What's the homie's name, man? Justin Jefferson. There yes, you sir. go, man. He is something special. There's no First doubt about all, it. Bro. No doubt about it, man. Solid team, solid running game. I just can't. I can't trust Kirk Cousins, man. The Giants, you know how the Giants coming. You know, they're going to run that thing. But another quarterback I don't trust, Danny Dimes. I don't trust him at all either. (laughs) (laughs) For me, who you got, Tom? No, no, he ain't got to say it yet, man. Uh, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off and pass it off. But this, this one right here might be one of them stinkers. Oh, man. See, I said, I mean, I I agree in a lot of places. What we don't have is consistency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And I'm speaking more so on the Giants end. They've been playing good football. I feel like the addition of that coach, uh, that Brian Dayball, you know, they've they've got a little kick in the ass here lately. They've been playing some tough football. Uh, But the Vikings, man. I mean, you can't go wrong with Justin Jefferson. You know, they can, TJ Hawkinson been making good plays out there. Uh, it's closer than the experts think. I think it's going to be a tough one. I think it's, it, it might stink for a little bit, but then at the end, you're going to see some big playability coming out of uh, Minnesota. I'm going to tell you what, man. I don't trust the Vikings. <laughs> Them motherfuckers is ranked 31st against – in total defense, 31st against the pass, and fucking 20 against the run. I don't trust them. And when they stink, my nigga, I mean, they fucking stink. Look at their losses, nigga. When they shit the bed, they shit the bed. And you know who's the biggest bed shitter wetter? Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, a, a bad game from Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones, okay? Is nothing compared to the stinker that Kirk Cousins could lob out there. And I'm telling you, 10 for 31, 98 yards, and you got Justin Jefferson out there. Mm. How do you manage this? Mm. How do Inconsistency. You, how do you? And you know what? You know what my, my biggest inconsistency with them is? Is that these guys are 28th in rushing with Dalvin Cook and Madison. How do you manage this? How? How? Beware of the Vikings this week. I'm going to tell you right now, man. Something about this shit just don't smell right. And the Giants are going into a dome. You know, they're one. They're they're, they're fourth in the league in rushing. Mm-hmm. Okay, behind teams like Chicago, the Ravens, the Bills, and then the Giants. Mm-hmm. And you want to know what all these teams have in common? Running quarterbacks. Okay. That is a real problem, okay? And that's a problem for everybody because you have to play 11 on 11 when you got to run a quarterback. So I'm going to reserve my judgment on this one, man. But I'm just saying, man, beware of the Vikings, man. Beware of the Vikings, man. Fire beware. Yeah, man, for real. <laughs> Who you got, man? So for me, this is where – this is my upset special, man. I think the Giants go into the new Metrodome or whatever you want to call it, Mercedes-Benz, and get that win. Didn't you take the Seahawks? No, hell no. Nah, you oh, took my bad. Money. Yeah, I did. You know what I'm saying? My bad. <laughs> you, took, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, this is it. This this is it. This is my upset special. Giants go in there and get a win. Saquon Barkley go in there and get busy on the ground. I got the Giants going here, going in there and getting one. 24-20. Mm. 24-20. Oh, man. I'm going to have to disagree once again, my brother. I just feel like even with – them being so porous against a run, they're just going to make one too many big plays. I feel like you might see Kirk Cousins come out there this game and and make sure he put that ball in Justin Jefferson's hands, get TJ Hawkinson to move those chains just enough in four quarters to beat these Giants. You know, they got that Cinderella slipper on right now. The, The Giants have made it. You know, but the Vikings are 13 and four. So as inconsistent as they've been, they won 13 games behind that. And I see that game being very close, 28-24 Vikings. Let me ask y'all guys something. Who's a more special player, 
Saquon Barkley or Justin Jefferson? Mm. Wow. Right. We don't. That is a question for the ages. And we're going to get both of these guys on the fucking turf. Yeah. This should be really, really, really a great watch. Um, Kirk Cousins, please come to play. OK, because uh, when in doubt, Danny Dimes is going to run around and make plays with his legs if he's not going to do anything else. OK, I don't know. So he's going to move the chains with his legs. It's going to be up to Kirk Cousins and the Vikings to keep it close at home. Um, At the end of the day, though, I'm going to go with the Vikes. Uh, I just think they got too much on the outside. Hawking, Osborne, Thielen, Justin Jefferson, Delvin Cook. I mean, like, they're fucking loaded. Um, I don't know if the Giants offense is going to be able to hold them. They are uh, 25th against the pass, allowing 358 yards of passing a game. I think Kirk Cousins is going to fucking shred these dudes. And Vikings win uh, 41 to 20. Mm. Okay. That, that's yeah. the prediction there. <laughs> like, all right. He said it's like, not close. No, nah, no, not at all. Like on the turf, <laughs> all those weapons, spread yeah. them out. Um, I, I, I like Thibodeau um, as a pass rush. I think they're going to. I gonna, do too, man. That I think young they're boy. Gonna, has a motor, man. Yes. He was they're going to chip epic. him. They're going to double team him. They're going to slide protection. Yeah. They're going to make sure Kurt's backside is protected all fucking game, and he's just going to rip. Okay. All right. Uh, here's the next one is uh, late night, Sunday night. Everyone thinks this is fucking chalk talk. Um, Ravens, Bengals, third stringer, Bengals coming up, or backup Huntley coming in. Um what, what what do we see different from fucking last week to this week? This right here, I don't think you see much different. <laughs> you know, unless eight come out and play. Eight, eight's not coming is, out. Which is not eight's happening. not coming out. We know eight's not coming out. Uh, this is going to be another stinker and a route. A easy work, <laughs> as KG would say. Easy work. Mm. That's all okay. I got. That's all you got. D, what you got. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Hey, look, man. I agree with Ty. Uh, I don't think that Baltimore has a chance, man. Uh, uh, they're saying that uh, Tyler Huntley has that shoulder tendonitis. So we're going to see that bum Anthony Brown come out again. He went 19 for mm. 44 last week with two picks. Mm. They just played these same Bengals. Okay. Um, I don't see it being close at all. We already know what the Bengals got over there. They're a serious contender for the AFC championship game. Okay, so uh, Burrow and them boys is going to have their way with Baltimore. This game fucking scares me. And it probably scares me more than any game this weekend because the lack of respect that people have for grown men in the Mm -hmm. Baltimore Ravens. If anybody knows anything about football, it's that you can't out finesse a motherfucker. Mm. You can, but you can't. The thing about football is I could be more physical and less talented and beat you. Okay. And that is the recipe that the Ravens have used to dominate that division over and over and over and over again. I was so happy that we were able to beat New England because had they fucking won, they would be in, and we would have to rematch them this week. It's hard to beat a team and see them three times in a year. And I know Baltimore, but beat them earlier in the year, but it's super hard. This is not basketball. We don't play back to the backs. It's super hard to game plan, beat a team, and turn around and have to beat them again the very next week. That's like, tough. I, I don't think you know the mental – capacity that it's going to take for the Bengals and you know what the Ravens know that they know that these are Super Bowl bound they know that would you they would love nothing more than to go in with a third string quarterback and fuck this shit up and Harbaugh's one hell of a coach and he knows this team better than anybody and they just need one game like I trust me I, I like the Bengals a lot they got all the talent in the world but it's something Man, this game don't sit right with me. It's something about, yeah, and, and nobody's saying that. It's an underlying thing. Like they're just gonna roll them again. They're gonna roll like, bro. You you just played these motherfuckers last week. 
You know exactly how he going to step when he blow off the ball. You know exactly how he going to move when he do this. You know exactly what he going to do when he do this. Like, I, I really don't know, man. J.K. will be back on the field. They didn't have Dobbins last week. You know what I'm saying, man? Gus Edwards going to be playing. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, you know, Baltimore bring five all the time. It only take one play and Burrow could be out the game, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, so who you got? Man, for me, like I said, easy work. You know what I'm saying? They got that cat Joe Cool. I know they got a cat Joe Mixon. And I know they got Jamar Chase. And right there is all I need. 41-7, Bengals. Yeah, I mean, uh, Money, you said some very interesting things right there. I mean, uh, it is definitely tough to beat a team. And when you just played them, uh, psychologically, it, 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 it's going to be hard. Um, knowing that the pressure is all on Cincinnati to win the football game. Baltimore doesn't have any pressure. Everybody's picking them to lose, just like me. I'm picking them to lose, too. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I got them losing 28-10. I figure they can get a, a score on the board or something like that, maybe. But it's going to be bad. 28-10 Bengals. Ah, we don't understand the laws of men. So... <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, I don't give a fuck about Joe Mixon because they 29th in rushing, averaging 95 yards a game. So the Bengals don't fucking run the football very effectively at all. Joe Mixon had one game where he had four touchdowns in year, and that motherfucker didn't show up the rest of the 17 other 16 games. So with that being fucking said, um, third string quarterback, Anthony Brown. 44 passes, two picks, 19 completions last week. You can't do worse than that, um, but you can do better than that. Um, Joe Burrow on trajectory to be one of – he's already got a, a Hall of Fame jacket, if you ask some of, some of these people out here right now. You know what I mean? He's going to be better than uh, Allen and Mahomes and Herbert and um, whoever's after them next year that's getting drafted who's the greatest. He's going to be the greatest ever. But uh, I don't give a fuck about any of that shit, man. Uh, everybody put their pants leg on one leg at a time. Bengals, 21. Ravens, 22. Mm. Greatest kicker in history, Justin Tucker. Mm. Fuck whoa, em. whoa, whoa. You just took the Ravens over the Bengals? That's what the fuck I did. That's what the fuck I, I did. I, you know what? I don't even get that. I don't know. They've got a third-string quarterback out there just like my Miami Dolphins. They do. They well, we don't have as good an offense as my Miami Dolphins. No. They don't have as good. Okay. 21, no. 22. I'm writing this down right now. Mm-hmm. 22, 21. Didn't they just pay Roquan Smith? Ravens. Yes, they did. Okay. That's what I thought. That's a reason. Mm-hmm. That's a reason. Okay. And they win. They win. They, they know how to. Like, you, this is not. This is not. They um, did win 10 games. But this but, and this but, is not they, like this they, is they not had the, that they had that man back there though. But you know this is not like this is not unheard of. This is an AFC North rivalry. This is Ravens football. This is black and blue. Motherfuckers think that they just gonna go out there and throw this bitch deep all over the field again. Like nigga, that shit ain't about to happen this week. Nigga, we know they about to play cloud coverage, and we know these motherfuckers about to come up and hit this week. Like we already, I already know. Like, this is playoff football. Motherfucker going to have to earn every inch against Baltimore this week. Oh, shit. Okay. And you just beat their ass last week and disrespected yeah. them and flipping coins and dancing and shit, nigga. And you watch that shit all week. In fi- just imagine you watch that shit all week in film. And this is a team you get to play who just did this. This ain't like early on in the season, nigga. This yeah. shit just happened. It just happened on Sunday. Nigga, you and you watching this. You're right. It's, it's in here. It's gonna be a lot closer than motherfuckers think. Even if the Ravens don't win, I'm telling you, it's it's it it's grown men playing from in here. It's gonna Heart. be a different game. Okay, then. All right, man. Let's wrap up uh super wild card weekend. I guess this is uh in light of both backup quarterbacks. Um, I because you could have put Dolphins Bills on Monday night, or you could have put uh Ravens Bengals on Monday night. But seeing that they had the backups, backups, and you can't put them on there, because I would have loved to see Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow or Tua and Allen on Monday night. 
You know what I'm saying? But we get fucking Dak and Brady on Monday night. Go ahead, man. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we we, we know Tom Brady is Tom Brady. The Buccaneers have been, I would say, average throughout the whole year. I would say ass, but go ahead. (laughs) I mean, you know, they play in probably the worst division. No, not yeah. probably the worst division. <laughs> I'm being nice, the worst division. <laughs> you know, luckily for them, they have a home game. Back that up. Back that up. Time out. We lied. We lied. Um, the AFC South is clearly the worst division. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to correct that for real. I, I mean, I get you. Uh, it seems like everybody in the South is bad. <laughs> I mean, both sides, but yeah. but clearly the AFC side is a little bit more shittier. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> like, you know I mean? Yeah, for me, though, you know, the Cowboys come in. A good, solid defense. You know, not as good as they were last year, I believe. Um, you Did know, you that, see that stat? Did you see that stat? They're one and four on grass. One and four on grass? And they got to go play on grass this week. Hold yeah. on, let me write that down. <laughs> Come on, man. One and four on grass. Yeah. They don't want to might change grass my whole shit. perception of them. <laughs> I'm pass that off. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, what gets me is like Dallas never wows me. Mm-hmm. They're an inconsistent ass team. Dak Prescott is inconsistent to me. The Dallas Cowboys defense is what makes this football game. That's what makes every football game that they play to me. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? I know that that Dallas offense is really good. It's okay. No, fuck it's not. They're ninth in rushing and 14th in passing. They're a really good offense. Bro. You know, They're fourth in scoring offense, 27 and a half points a game. Their fucking offense is good. Like, hey, don't shade these motherfuckers because Dak ain't winging it all around the field. Like, motherfucker, they have two studs. Running backs and motherfuckers want to disrespect Zeke. Nah, he ain't got the super burst that he got no more. But I seen this motherfucker run through four, five, six tackles on one fucking play. So, um, shut the fuck up. Yes, um, nice. bro. Huh? You know, I just, I don't know, man. I feel like it's play. CD Lamb is a grown man. It's playoff football, man. I mean, I I feel like the Bucks still have a chance they could possibly win this football game. They, they made positive. it in eight and nine. Okay, yeah. they did. They, they don't deserve it, but they there. Yeah, and they and they got you know Brady still back there. Yeah, you know, and, and he know how to win and win these kind of type of games. He did yeah. it once before. Yeah, what you think, money? I think um, I, I'm I'm you know what I'm so fucking scared of Tampa Bay. Because they got Via Vea back, that defense. Uh, Winfield is back now. That secondary is rounding in. Um, the only problem with them is um, they're last in fucking rushing with 76 yards a game. So, and, 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 that's, and that's why they have nine. That's why they're eight and nine. Because Tom Brady doesn't have a running game. If Tom Brady had a running game, this shit would be chalk talk right now. We wouldn't even be wondering um, if Tampa Bay – is going to fucking beat Dallas. We would know Tampa Bay is going to beat Dallas. Um, I, I, I literally think that Tampa Bay finds their running game in the fucking playoffs, and they're the fucking most dangerous team in the NFC. Um, I believe they find their fucking running game. This is a – and, I, you know, I feel so bad for Dallas because they just could get the shit going, but they just keep getting these bad fucking draws, bro. Like, last year you drew the 49ers in the first round. I'm like, Man. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And now you draw on Tampa Bay, which is a and in, in, in hindsight, for real, people don't understand this is a bad matchup for Dallas. Like, you know what I mean? This is not a good, this is not a good matchup on paper. Or when you go um 22 verse 22, 11 verse 11, offense and defense, this is a really, really bad matchup. And even though they don't have Mike Evans out there, I they, Dallas is weak in the middle of the field. Um, and where's Tom Brady like to operate? Oh, yeah, the fucking middle of the field. So, uh, who you got? Well, I mean, listen, if the Cowboys can't get it done, they'll never get it done, right? And I don't think they'll get it done. I like the Buccaneers in this game. Um, uh, give me, give me the Bucks, give me 27, give me Cowboys 21. I just like the home team in, in this matchup. Uh, you know what? Once again, I hate 
having a piggyback there, you know, but I'm the same, man. I got the Bucks winning this football game, you know, uh, uh, Tom Brady pedigree, you know, uh, they've been here before. They know that they're in the playoffs. They know what their record is. Um, and, you know, he can, he, he's tricky. They can hit him with the screen game. Uh, you know, they, they, they don't got Evans, but they got a uh, what good one out there. You know, uh, that screen pass game, uh, I, I see the Bucks doing this 24-21. Close, but the Bucks pull it off. After all that talk about me saying the Bucks find a running game, they're going to run their ass right to the fucking crib. <laughs> I'm taking Dallas in this fucking game. All right, I just like um, – I don't give a fuck that Via Vey is back. I don't care about that secondary. <laughs> That's um, all you were talking <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about any of that shit, man. Um, Tom Brady's a fucking statue in the pocket. Um, they 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 don't run the football particularly well, um, so they're not able to set up play action or screen passes. Um, t- Tom Brady really misses a fucking tight end and to really take advantage in the middle of the field. Um, yeah, man, Dallas in this game, 34-13. Ooh. So um, money with the spicy predictions. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I got I gotta keep it, gotta keep it funky. You know what I'm saying? I'm over ain't gonna watch this shit if I just be talking that bullshit that everybody else <laughs> talking. You know what I'm saying? I can't do it, man. I won't do it because you know what? They lying to you. They yeah. motherfucking picking from their minds. I'm picking from my heart. I look at the oh, stats, wow. I watch this shit, and I'm like, oh no, nah, bro. I watch I just I just don't see. Even if the Bengals win, I just don't see them rolling up the Ravens, nigga. It's going to be hard for me to even imagine as a player, as a player myself, nigga, what? Y'all just beat us last week and we get a rematch? This is football, nigga. That's right. I ain't got to wait five, six weeks to That's play right. you again. And I'm going to put 24-10 on you after I just beat you last week so I can go on and try to get this uh, AFC championship. That's what the Bengals said. Yeah, that's what they said, nigga. But you know what, nigga? They really meant it last week because they was talking about if the Ravens win, it's a coin flip and all this shit. So they was out there digging, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you feel like I dominated and I did this and I did that. But, like, it's a different mindset with Ravens. They fucking hungry. Yeah, you know you a better team. Yeah, you know what you need to do. But the Ravens want something more, man. So I don't know, man. I don't know gonna be exciting to see yeah you better be scared man you better be fucking scared don't 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 let a motherfucker important get hurt like jamar no, like nigga motherfuckers fail to realize it's still this is playoff football but motherfuckers still get hurt out here okay it's injuries that happen all the time motherfucker get hurt it's it's it's, it's I mean, even that how, shit up that's how the game goes you know one misstep you know one bad tackle you know right. whatever one shot to the head it and who anything knows can happen the- and who knows what the fucking weather going to be like Sunday night in Ohio. Mm. I mean, it's 32 degrees right now. It's snowing out here, bro. Mm-hmm. So well, he, let he me ask you something. Know. Like, that's why I don't even care about home field advantage in Buffalo. Motherfucker, 50 mile an hour winds, we grounded. Now, that's why we had to really switch over and start teaching ourselves how to run the football. Well, if you want to be a great team, you got to be multifaceted, right? So you got to be able to do a little bit of both. If you want to win that thing, you better well, have- Allen is very good at running the football. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, man, Dolphins ain't got no chance, man. Y'all don't even average 100 yards rushing the game, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I mean, y'all, y'all I not didn't built say for the we playoffs. had a chance. My y'all friend. not built for the playoffs, though. That's what I'm saying. You know, we're, we're, need- a big play, we're a big play football team. That, and that's why y'all struggled in November and December because y'all niggas don't run the ball. And like when you go out to places and niggas ground you and shit, you know what I'm saying? You got to motherfucking be able to turn that bitch, nigga. And we learned that and shit. You, you, we you learned that the shit the hard is? way. The problem is, is that we can run the ball. He wasn't running the football <laughs> because we averaged more than five yards of carry every time we touched the football with Raheem Marshall. He averaged 4.9 yards of carry. How, how's, and, but you can't give him the ball, though. He wasn't giving it to him. I mean, but you can't, though. Look what happened when we started giving the ball. What happened? What happened when we started getting the ball? What happened? That motherfucker started going crazy. And then after you go crazy, what happened? Well, I'll say he this. I mean, he, he motherfucker get hurt. Like, ask all the 49er fans, nigga. I'm not bullshit. The nigga T.I. said the exact same. He said, nigga, Raheem Moser, after 100 carries, he's yeah. done. <laughs> I mean, I like the kid Wilson, for real. I think he's our best tailback. That motherfucker run hard as shit to me. I be wanting I, to see them give it to him. Guess what? Guess what? After 100 carries, he's done. 
<laughs> well, listen, I know, I know. Tyreek. Yeah, we Hill. are the Niners right now. We're the Niners. Listen, the AFC. Tyreek Hill's feeling confident. I mean, he told him, "Hey, you better get your hamstrings ready." So he feel good about what might happen. We'll see. We will see. That's why they play the games, though. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see Sunday. You know, my pick still stands. I love, uh, you know, all my Dolphins people, but I'm just I'm gonna be real and honest when it comes to that. And I think that any real fan will be honest about what the outcome of the football game should be with a third string quarterback. And you're seeing what's happened the last two to three weeks here without a legit signal caller back there to move this high powered offense. You can't get on the ball. You ain't going to be able to score. And that's what happens. CBN uh, sports, man. All right. That's what I'm going to say, man. We wrapping this up. CBN sports. We getting out of here, man. Don't believe nothing. These cats say, believe everything I say, because I'm the champ. And I know shit about sports. They know shit about other stuff. Um, that's the scholar. That's the genius, man. Thank y'all for watching. God bless, man. Hope y'all enjoy football this weekend.